An InfoSec journalist is censored by a DDoS, the Yahoo hack leaks half a billion creds, and researchers remotely hack a Tesla's brake system. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for September 27, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get these shows before anyone else, and check out our Patreon to see how you can help the show grow. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place for that. On to the first story. The U.S. Constitution appropriates that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. When considering the freedom of speech for the press, how does the law secure a journalist's ability to get the news out there when a single-handed DDoSer can censor them in under 24 hours with pure brute force? This is a huge concern and was brought to light by Krebs on Security this week as Brian Krebs' site was attacked in response to a recent article he posted detailing the four-hire DDoS operation called VDOS and the two Israeli man men who ran the site that got arrested shortly after that story went live. Krebs' site was attacked in what his DDoS protection provider Akamai said was twice the size of the next largest attack that they had ever seen, totaling 620 gigabits per second of data being thrown at his site. Yeah, that is a lot of data. Akamai decided to cancel their services on his site, to which Krebs then switched to the free Project Shield program run by Google to protect journalists from censorship online. Most of the devices used for the DDoS against the site were vulnerable IoT or Internet of Things devices, and with more of these being sold onto the consumer market every single year, will distributed denial of service attacks get worse? We need to be in a position to protect our free speech and keep independent journalists from being censored due to angry retaliation. We need to be very wary and keep a very wary eye on IoT devices released to not so tech savvy consumers who may not know they're publicizing so much on the internet and being used in attacks such as this one. As an independent podcaster myself, I know that we too could be attacked in a retaliatory manner. And while no one can silence us, I don't want to see journalists that I respect being censored for getting news out to a wider public. On September 22nd of last week, Yahoo CISO Bob Lord posted an entry to Yahoo's Tumblr announcing a hack on their services from 2014. Stolen information included names, email addresses, telephone numbers, dates of birth, hashed passwords, and encrypted or unencrypted security questions. While not explaining who or why, Lord also stated that they believe this was done by a state-sponsored hacker, but the attacker is no longer in their servers. While the passwords were hashed, some of them were using older SHA-1 or MD5 hashing techniques instead of the stronger bcrypt. Because of the hack, Yahoo is asking their users to obviously change their passwords, especially if they've been using the same one since 2014, or they can also use a Yahoo account key instead. This is really bad timing for Yahoo. They're currently closing a deal with Verizon to sell over the core business for $4 billion. Verizon apparently was not aware of the hack until early last week, which could potentially mean that Yahoo didn't know about the hack or that they hid it from the sale agreement. As for Yahoo, some of their hashing certificates were self-signed and very, very old with only 2.5% of them being issued within the last 90 days. These days, it's pretty common to get a certificate that expires within 12 months or so. Okay, so why is this important? It happened back in 2014, right? Now, while this hack happened two years ago, having 500 million accounts breached, even if it's just a small percentage of those that were using older encryption and hashing algorithms, they could be used to hit users on many other sites, given that they are so easy to reverse engineer into plain text, and consumers are still using the same passwords on multiple different websites, which is a really bad idea. So tell your grandma to change her Yahoo email password if she's still using Yahoo, and make sure that she's not reusing the same one on multiple sites. Researchers at Chinese Keen Security Lab were able to take over some of Tesla systems remotely through the vehicle's controller area network. They figured out how to open the doors and the trunk, the sunroof, control the in-dash display, use turn lights, and one of my favorites, break the car while it is in moving motion. The research was already 
submitted to Bug Crowd, and they are the ones that handle Tesla's bug bounty program, and they have already released a patch to fix the vulnerability. A video has been released demoing the attacks, but no specific details. And the video is actually pretty fun to watch, so definitely check it out. So this is a really great reason to just not buy a connected car. Just stick with the dumb ones from like the 90s and the early 2000s, because those haven't necessarily been hacked yet. <laughs> Thanks again to all the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep bringing you news every single week. Any little bit helps us to grow the show and in return we're going to be building a RSS feed for you. Yes, Patreon just released an audio RSS ability that's still in beta. Not sure if it's available to Threatwire yet, but we're going to be looking into it. We might even feature your fur baby in an upcoming episode like these ones. Check out the perk levels on on Patreon. Thank you again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can always subscribe below. You can hit the share button and share it on your favorite social media page and use the hashtag ThreatWire so that I can see it and I might even retweet you. Now with that, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.